A couple weeks ago, we, we talked electrical work in relation to how subpanels should be wired. At the same time, I got asked another question. What's the importance of aluminum wiring in a panel? Now, during the course of a home inspection, I think most homes have issues in relation to electrical and plumbing. And there's this one contractor that shows up a lot, and his name's Jerry. And I, I've never met Jerry, but his last name is Rig. You know, so evidently, people tend to jerry-rig their electrical work because they think they can do it themselves. And it's the only aspect that can really burn a house down in your home. So that's why electrical work should always be done by a professional. Um, don't count on a friend, don't count on someone that says, oh, I think I can do that for you, because there can be real harm that can, that can occur with that. Now, today's topic is about aluminum wiring. Aluminum wiring was popular during the Vietnam War, so roughly 1968 to 1972. Now, in the old days, and currently, we wire our homes with copper. Back then they said, well, if we can use copper, we can use aluminum. Aluminum's cheaper. Copper's going to the war effort. So let's give it a try. But the problem is that device makers, which uh, make your receptacles and switches, did not have devices that were designed for the use of aluminum wiring. Now, what's the difference between copper and aluminum? Electricity flows through copper, but along aluminum. So the heat transfers are different. So what these electricians decided they would try to do is off the receptacle or switch, run about a six inch pigtail, run the aluminum from the panel, and then wire nut it. Well, because of these heat transfers being different, these wire nuts, if they ever fell off or failed, could create a real fire hazard. Now, a standard 15 amp breaker can support maybe eight devices, again, receptacles and or switches. So, uh, about two weeks ago, I had a house with aluminum wiring where I found six circuit breakers with aluminum wiring. And I'm going to describe this in a minute back to that sub panel that we spent a few minutes ago uh, before. Um, so what we look for is at that neutral bar, any signs of aluminum wiring, and then we trace it back to the breaker. So for those six breakers, there was roughly 48 devices that were connected to them. Now, way back, and I've been doing this now almost 40 years, but um, in about the late 80s to early 90s, there was a local company in Valley Forge called AMP, A-M-P, and they designed this wrench uh, or set of pliers that would crush literally the aluminum and the copper together, and it was called Copalum. Now, under this 10,000 pounds of pressure, it eliminated the need for the wire nut and made the transfer of current from one material to the other safer. The problem is, is that the, the set of pliers that they were selling was too expensive for a normal electrician to support. So most people didn't buy them. Now, AMP ended up moving, I believe, to Tennessee or that part of the country, so um, we don't even look at that anymore as far as a process to, to make a repair. But what we do ask is that on those circuits, an electrician just pops several receptacles or switches out to check those connections to make sure they're still safe. So after 1972, uh, we went back to copper as your primary source of wiring. The manufacturers now have decided, let's make new breakers that are designed for the use of both copper and aluminum. So you'll see on a breaker, C-U-A-L, okay? And then they started making receptacles and switches that were also designed for the use of those mixed wires. So let me take you back to the sub-panel at Tri-County, and I'm going to tell you what to look for. Your, your particular homes, again, folks, are 1968 to 1972. So if those houses, if your house was built in that time frame, you really need to take a look. Let me show you. Now, this panel box may look familiar to some of, of my viewers because I was in here a couple of weeks ago. But what we look for in a primary panel, okay, on this neutral bar, you can share the grounds and the neutrals. Again, with the sub panel, we have to separate them. Okay, so the first thing I look at is the neutral bar. Why? I want to see if I'm using all copper, if we have some aluminum, but also any smoking or charring, which would have indicated a short. So if I see any, any aluminum wiring on either side here, then I follow that wire back to the circuit breaker. If I see aluminum in any of these breakers, well, then we have discussions with the client. 
uh, I explain the copper loom process, I, exp I, I explain uh, the risk of aluminum wiring and the importance of having it checked by a licensed electrician. Now, what can be done? Uh, it's really, unfortunately, very hard to run new circuits from the panel uh, to those outlets. So again, the best thing we can do is try to monitor those particular circuits where the aluminum wiring is in use. How often do we check? At, at a minimum, I would ask that you re just remove the distribution panels, usually four to six screws, um, and then just take a look at the neutral bar. And if you see any changes on that, uh, immediately call your electrician. Uh, because again, fire is, uh, is, is a huge risk. Um, not only for the building, but of course for your family. So once again, if you like this content, please push the subscribe button and I look forward to talk to you next time.